So I found this very interesting 4770K engineering sample CPU for sale on eBay quite recently. Uh, this should be the latest qualification sample version of the 4770K Haswell CPU, if I remember correctly. The Q-Spec is QE, H and 6. Uh, it's not the most notable qualification sample version that was used for like overclocking purposes at the very early days of the Haswell launch, like during the summer of 2013 when manufacturers were demonstrating their best motherboards for overclocking. The more notable Q-Spec version was actually the QE6S, if I remember correctly. The famous part about that Q-Spec was that those CPUs were pretty much like immortals. You could use extremely high voltages, both for validation and benchmarking purposes, and they didn't really die. You can actually find some information about that thing from hardware book forums, for example, the Maximus 6 Extreme thread posted by Extreme Addict from Poland. In that thread, he states that that Q-Spec version could be run at well over 2 volt VCO values and even like 3 volt on the input. Very, very ridiculous values whatsoever. So the uh, QE H6 is pretty much the same thing as the retail 4770K. So you can actually kill this Q-Spec by running too high voltages. But some of these CPUs are actually pretty good, like very awesome to say the least. The, the very best QE H6 CPU that I know of is the one by Batose from uh, Romania. That CPU did like 6.8 GHz for SuperPi 1M, PiFast, etc. And I think quite good results even for multi-core purposes, but not at the very highest rankings. So uh, that CPU did lose to the best retails for multi-core, but on the single core it was almost the best. Only the CPU by Dan Karp managed to push a tiny bit higher. So uh, as the price of this CPU was still reasonable on eBay, I managed to obtain it with some help uh, from you guys, I mean. So that's the best part about you guys, that I have fans all over the world. So if I find listings on various sites like eBay that do not want to ship directly to me, I can use some of your guys' help to uh, purchase these items. So uh, I just received the CPU and I haven't even tested it, so I hope it works. The first thing that I noticed about the CPU when I started like inspecting it at very close detail was that I really think that the CPU has been deleted and resealed probably with some uh, uh, super glue type glue, which is not the best news if you ask me. It can be that the CPU has been used by some uh, person who's very knowledgeable about overclocking or, well, not always, but the CPU has been used for some kind of overclocking if it has been deleted. And also, if the uh, CPU has been resealed with super glue, I think it will be very difficult and risky to re-delete it. So uh, for LN2 purposes, I need to run conventional thermal paste between the die and the IHS. And it's if it's deleted and resealed, it's pretty certain that there's liquid metal between the die and the IHS. So, uh, I don't know, what do you guys think? I think the safest method to re-delete the CPU would be to use the same tactic I've been using on the most stubborn memory stick. So dip the CPU in paint thinner for some time, like a few hours, then put it in my rotational deleting tool and see if it can be deleted relatively easily. So I think the paint thinner should be able to soften even the super glue from Loctite, but we'll see. I need to think about this whole thing. I will be testing this CPU now with you guys on the Z97 OC formula from ASRock. That board is definitely the very best LGA1150 motherboard so for Haswell CPUs and Devil's Canyon G3258 Pentium whatever. So uh, I will use that board for the CPU and two sticks of uh, power chip based DDR3 memory but I will I will not highlight the memory part too much for now. I just want to see that does the CPU do good enough frequencies for multi-core etc. The target what I'm looking for is 5 gigahertz in Cinebench at 1.3 volts or below. My very best CPU did 5 GHz Cinebench with like 1.26, 1.28 volts. And that CPU did 6.4 GHz 
for Cinebench on LN2 and 6.5 GHz for GPU Pi back in the day, like seven years ago or so. So that's what I'm looking for. The VID needs to be at low enough values, etc. And then if the core part is good enough, I will check the IMC. Currently, I have one 4770K, which did DDR3 2800, even 2900, uh, with my best power chip based memories, which are the Patriot 5.2 uh, Sector 5s, at 8.13.8 timings at 2900. So that CPU has golden IMC, but the core part is not very good. So if this CPU has close to same level on the IMC as well, that, then I can put my current retail 4770K for sale if I don't need it anymore. So let's hope for the best. First of all, let's hope that it works. The CPU, I mean, it's the first time I'm actually trying any engineering sample Haswell CPU 4770K. But yeah, without further ado, I'll mount the board on my test bench, install the CPU, install the cooling, and let's start the actual uh, testing process and let's hope for the best. Let's hope that this CPU it's absolutely golden. Okay, so the first thing I want to show is the VID. So it seems that three of the cores have a VID value of a bit under one volt, so 0 0.992. I think my best CPU, which did those uh, incredible multi-core numbers, I think the uh, VID of the first core was 0 0.976. So as long as you have under one volt VID on, for, on a 4770K, it should be a very good result. I might just run uh, memories, etc. at Stark because I just want to see uh, how does the core actually do. That's what I'm mostly interested in. So 5 gigahertz on the core, cache maybe at 4.5, 100 base clock. So yeah, we don't have to touch that. Spread spectrum I will disable, uh, enable, should be SBPLL, maximum values on these. So 1000 watts. Okay, so 5 gigahertz, 4.5, and keep memory and everything at default values. So boost the FIVR switch frequency and so increase so what's increase or decrease the percentage of switching frequency. Yeah okay. Disable disable V core mm, 1.28 volts on the V core and cache voltage I will put at uh, 1.35. The cache voltage doesn't uh, really uh, matter on the temperatures that much compared to V core and input. Then uh, system agent maybe one. very basic and now input voltage already at 1.9 highest low line calibration whatsoever and raise the uh, switching frequency and memory I will just set to uh, 1.65 volts I'll just leave that to disable actually so very basic setting table 1.9 input memory these could probably just be an auto 1.35 on the cache, 1.28 on the V core. So let's hope, could we actually post and boot these settings? Because this will definitely determine is the CPU worth it to go any further. Okay, so the CPU is definitely not as good as I hoped for. 5 gigahertz, no chance to boot at 1.32 volts. 4.8 did post and boot. But of course, Windows 10, not the easiest operating system for comparison, as we used Windows 7 and XP back in the day, but I think we can still get somewhat okay numbers over here. It is warm, so uh, 
I should be able to uh, shave even like 10 to 15 degrees from this temperature range so maybe we could get like 4.8 gigahertz to 4.9 so it's still uh, not like it's still not like a lost game but I actually I'm more interested in the single core capability compared to multi-core this time around I would really like to have an awesome single core Haswell as I ha already had the very uh, awesome multi-core CPU which is sadly dead nowadays so I got like 6.6 .6 gigahertz plus in hardware or prime back in the day etc but it would be awesome to run like SuperPi 32 and if the IMC was good and the CPU was good enough for at least somewhat reasonable result so 4.8 passed what happens if we set 4.9 4.9 so 4.9, but it might fail. Yeah, crashed. Okay, so the IMC of this CPU really doesn't seem that good. So even DDR3 2600 doesn't seem that stable inside the operating system. So uh, it can usually post and boot, but it's very flaky inside the operating system. So a lot of like memory related crashes. So now I have to come back down to DDR3 2400. So 2666, no success in posting and booting, and not to even mention DDR3-2800. So currently, the quality difference between this CPU and my golden IMC retail 4770K, when it comes to the memory controller, I mean, is tremendous. So this CPU, I think it's somewhere between 2400 and 2500 on the IMC side, and the other CPU can run DDR3 2800, even 2900 uh, stable in SuperPi. So, uh, this kind of IMC level can't really go for the top scores in the various single threaded tests like SuperPi 32M, PyFast, etc. Usually, the IMC doesn't scale at the same pace from the cold temperatures compared to the actual core. But I might still try the CPU purely out of interest on LN2, like very briefly. Like, does the, uh, do the actual cores themselves scale well from the temperatures, like core and the cache? The target is obviously very high. So, single core, the target is somewhere between like 6.7 and 6.8 plus, and multi core 6.4 to 6.5 plus. So, those uh, target values are absolutely high. Multi core, I extremely doubt that this CPU can't go anywhere near those top speeds on the multi-core tests like Citibench, Geekbench, GPU Pi, etc. So uh, the very best 4770Ks, I think they did like 5.2 GHz on very strong water cooling. So this is maxing somewhere between like 4.8 and 4.9 currently. So yeah, that's pretty much it, I guess. So uh, uh, let me know what you think about my thoughts about the actual uh, deleting how would you delete a cpu that has been uh, covered heavily with loctite super glue because that stuff is definitely uh, very tough what would be the safest way to delete such a cpu of course i could just try a little bit with my deleting tool like does the uh, ihs feel very tough but i don't know i think the uh, paint thinner method could work also with Loctite super glue, like it worked so well with the Corsair Dominator GT uh, memory modules, but that's pretty much it. So uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in for this 4770K Haswell engineering sample or a qualification sample overclocking test, very rare piece of hardware nowadays in 2022. And yeah, let me know what you think about this uh, video in the comment section down below and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching one of my videos once again and I'll see you on the next one.